Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Canadian Social. We are live. My name is Tara, and I am here with my fabulous co-host, Renee. And we have an amazing guest today. We have Lori Ann Davis. And I'm so excited that she's here. Hello, Lori. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Lori. You're welcome. Yes, thank you so much. So Lori is a certified relationship specialist with over 28 years experience. She really connects her clients, or she really connects with her clients and is passionate about helping them create relationships they desire. She's a radio host of Real Talk Radio Show on Libby Radio. She's a speaker and the author of Unmasking Secrets to Unstoppable Relationships. She also teaches workshops and classes for couples and singles, helping them to create unstoppable relationships. Lori has a master's degree in clinical psychology from the University of West Florida. She was a licensed medical health counselor, or sorry, mental health counselor in Florida for over 20 years, practicing individual marriage and family therapy. She was a clinical supervisor for an outpatient office specializing in family therapy. She was also in private practice in Florida, working with individuals, couples, and families. She is currently a private practitioner in Charlotte, North Carolina, providing individual and marriage counseling. She's a certified relationship specialist, a member of the Relationship Coaching Institute, and Lori is also a qualified psych K facilitator trained in basic and advanced techniques. Holy man, lady. <laughs> you've done some things. <laughs> when you get old, you've had time to do things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's that's fabulous. So this time of year with the holiday season coming around, we wanted to have a little bit of conversation about family dynamics. Wow, <laughs> it's a year where you have a lot of them, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just a few, you know, like, I mean, my family's perfect. Are you listening, mom? Um, <laughs> the Hallmark commercials, that's your family. Yeah, totally. Beautiful, yep. people, right? No dirty dishes, no kids. No. Yeah, okay, got it. No yeah. one complains. We all just hug and love and, yeah. yeah. And everybody's wearing beautiful Christmas sweaters. Yeah. And, they just, yeah. and like, if they're not whining. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so there's so many different things that come up with Christmas. Like, I mean, be it the stress from finances and extending too far and who do you buy gifts for? And did you buy the wrong thing for the wrong person? And like, there's just, who do you invite to dinner? There's so many areas of stress that can, can come out. And, you know, it's not things that we necessarily think of. Some of us, you get, I find the older I get, the more I dread the dynamics of Christmas versus just really loving Christmas. So what? We have to talk about that, right? I know, <laughs> I know, and I have a great family, but they, you know, we all have our issues. <laughs> Goodness for wine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, part of I think what causes so much stress around the holidays are our expectations and trying to meet. Like you can have unrealistic expectations and Hallmark commercials and all of those sorts of things definitely don't help, right? We have, we, you know, we see all these things and then we think that that's what our holiday should be like. And then we may have expectations based on what our past was, you know, traditions in our family that we're trying to keep up. Um, or other people may be putting expectations on us. They think that word expectation is at the for most people of a lot of the stress for holidays. And so I'm going to encourage you to look at those expectations and really decide which ones you want to stay with and which ones that you could allow to go. Because you have the right to have the holiday that works for you, that works for your family, and you have the right to set your own expectations. And I don't think, you know, your parents might not agree, um, but <laughs> we have the right to create our own traditions. And get the way we want. You know, I said to my children this year, you know what? I think this year we're not doing much for gifts. We're, you know, it's not that we can't necessarily afford it, but I said, let's go on vacation. You know, let's go on a vacation. And we went on two vacations last year. And what if we just do a few little gifts and we really spend more time together? And they mm -hmm. were all, they were like, yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I remember one year, 
I asked my children, what were the most important things for them for the holiday? And they were a little bit younger. Um, and I said, so if there was one thing that you didn't want to miss during the holiday, what would that be? And it was so funny. It was something that didn't cost anything and took almost none of my time and effort. <laughs> we, had, we had started this tradition, I think maybe the year before, maybe it was two years before, of them putting on their pajamas and I would make hot cocoa and put it in a travel cup. And we'd get in the van and we'd drive around and look at Christmas lights. Mm. And that was the one thing that they didn't want to miss that they said was at the top of their list for the holiday. So do we ask each other, like, what's the most important thing for you? You might be surprised. You know, ask your partner if you have one. Ask your kids. You know, what is that? What's most important to you? It might be something small. And I thought to myself, that's it. Like, that's the most important thing for you. We can, you know, we can definitely do that. And so we've been doing that every year ever since. They're getting a little bit older now into that preteen and teenage years. So they don't necessarily put on their footy pajamas anymore. <laughs> but we still do the hot cocoa. And we still get in the van and we still go look at Christmas lights. You know? Yeah. You know, I love that. That's actually something that um, we used to do when I grew up was there was that get your cocoa. We would just drive around town and go look at the lights. So and I did mm -hmm. actually really enjoy that. So now that you bring it up, I mean, I've done it a few times with the kids now. But yeah, you yeah, it's, it. it's not the details so much that that usually people remember. It's the experience. So it's the emotions behind an experience that cause you usually to remember something. So if there's a lot of negative emotion, obviously, you're going to remember that. If we're talking about the holidays, though, we want to create things with positive emotions. So if you're doing something and there's a lot of fun around it, there's a lot of love, there's these good feelings around it, your children are going to remember that. Your partner or whatever, like you're going to remember that. Those are the things that you're going to remember, not what gift you got usually, unless there's a big emotion around the gift. But so when you remember that and you remember that it's the emotions that are going to cause that memory, you, you maybe think about the holidays in a different way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, and I love, you know, how you're bringing up expectations because I was doing a little bit of research. I'm like, what are like the common things that come up around families during the holidays? And even the, uh, the expectations and um, competing with the different family traditions that they were raised with. So I really appreciate what you're saying about creating new family traditions because I think over the years as family grows and they, they grow and they get bigger and bigger, it becomes more difficult because there's so many different people involved yeah. to, you know, bring everybody together without any like uh, stress sometimes. And for some people, families get smaller due to circumstances. You know, maybe there's been a divorce in the family. Maybe there's been a death in the family. I mean, those, you know, changes and bring up a lot of stress. And then when the holidays come and you can't have those same experiences that you were used to. I remember the first Thanksgiving without my dad. You know, my dad would always come for Thanksgiving and we would do it together. And, and it was sad. And it wasn't, I think, until we sort of created a new tradition and, and talked about doing things different that all of a sudden then it became easier. So if you had some loss or some grief in your life, it's really important to create a new tradition that you're choosing. It doesn't have to be the same. And sometimes making it different can really help you to then start enjoying that holiday again. Mm -hmm. You know, and asking everybody. So I, my here's a story. I was married just a tiny, tiny bit about me. I was married 28 years. Never thought that I wouldn't be married. Um, but, you know, I always say life happens. And <laughs> 28 years, I became a single parent and I'm, I'm currently remarried again. But, but you know, I, I remember trying to make the holidays perfect for the kids and trying to orchestrate everything. And it was a couple of years into that, maybe four or five years into that, when I finally realized I was stressing myself out, trying to make sure the kids saw their dad on the holiday day, you know, and then I asked them, it, it, do you, do you, do you want to see your dad like Thanksgiving day? Do you want to do both family, you know, both or, or Christmas day or, or does it matter? And they were like, Oh, we don't care when we see him. And then I asked him, do you want the kids on Thanksgiving day or necessarily Christmas day? Or does it matter? And he went, Oh no, it doesn't matter to me. And I thought, really? Like, I've been busting my butt like all these years trying to make it. And I was the only one who it was important to, and it wasn't important to them. And so like talking as a family, maybe. So now we don't do that. Now we're, 
so it's just so easy now and so laid back. They're happy, and and my Thanksgiving and my Christmas dinners are so much easier. So communicate with people if your family's small or if it's big. Uh, if you can communicate and find out what's really important to everybody, you might discover some of the stuff you're really stressing about isn't that important. Like, does everybody have to be together that one day, or could it be the weekend before? Or the you know, I grew up seeing my dad on a different day, and I remember thinking, oh, good, I got to have two Christmases. That was really great. So, you know, some communication and not maybe making assumptions about it. And then Sorry. You being able to put your foot down, right? And say, that doesn't work for me. I can't do that. Here's what I can do. Hmm. You know? Yeah, well, you know, and I think a lot of the times um, things that come up around the holidays too, Lori, is everybody gets so busy. I know me, um, I've got three kids and they're in activities and you're running with hockey and um, you know, they're, they're at, they do virtual school now, but in the past there'd be Christmas concerts and this and all these things. And there still are things that need to be attended. So sometimes coming into the holiday season, you're just like exhausted. And, you know, maybe it's the 23rd of December, things have wrapped up and it's like, okay, now you got to get everything ready. And all you want to do is like, say, put your pajamas on and curl up on the couch and cuddle and watch movies together. Um, so, you know, Right? Like, would that be the end of the world if you took a day off and just did that? That might be one of the things when your kids are grown that they remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, know? you know, it's it's funny because for us, um, this is my this will be my third Christmas, fourth Christmas doing it as a single parent. And Christmas Day when we were married was always big. It was both families or at least one of the families and a big dinner that I usually cooked. And like Tara's saying, you're so exhausted before it even happens. And then when we split, we decided to split Christmas Day and we rotate that. So whoever has Christmas morning one year has Christmas morning the next year. And the first year I still tried to fit the family dinner in the same day with only having my kids for half the day. And we were all a mess because he did the same thing. And essentially they had four Christmases in one day. And yeah, it was funny because now I, I don't plan any events for Christmas day. It's just the kids and I, and for my half of the day, and we literally hang out in our jammies and just play with our toys. And, and we do the family one the day before or the day after. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's creative. Like it doesn't have to be one particular way. No. And somebody else in your family is insisting on that. That's where boundaries come in. And it's okay to set boundaries and say, you know, we understand that that's important to you. But for the rest of us or for, for me, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that just doesn't work. That's too stressful. And it, it really is. It's a day. Yeah. And we put so much emphasis on that one particular day. You know, I work with a lot of singles. And matter of fact, I, I will host something at Christmas um, at my house for the mm. singles that don't don't have these pack schedules. And I always say, if it's a few people that come or if it's more, it doesn't matter. I just want to sort of be there for those people that are struggling and that need that social time. And um, and it's really worked out well. But you know, we can we can set those boundaries and just sort of say, um, no, that doesn't work for me. I can't I can't do that. It's a day. And, and it can happen another day. It's all about love. It's all about family. It's about sharing. And so if you've got a lot of family, that can happen a different day. And if you're alone, what if you, what if you took that day and just pampered yourself and just treated yourself? Is that really the end of the world? Well, well it, it is nice that you do that with the people who are single on the holidays. Cause I know for myself, that part of the day that I don't have the kids, I actually physically cannot be with my family that day because it upsets me that I don't have my kids. Whereas if I take the time and go to someone else's house or I'm home alone watching movies all day, I'm fine. Yeah. So it, there's so many, you just, and it's true. You just basically have to take the time and figure out what works for you and ask you know the people in your life that they just respect and honor that because i don't think there is any perfect family and you know it comes with stress for everybody and i agree with you releasing expectation and healthy boundaries i think are are enormously important at the holidays the other thing that comes up that i think we have to be aware of just so that we can deal with it is 
the holidays and being around sometimes family members can trigger old wounds for us. Mm -hmm. and really being aware that that might happen and what are those triggers so that we can kind of go in like sort of forewarn, you know, like prepare yeah. saying that, you know, when so-and-so asks, you know, well, why aren't you remarried or, you know, you know, why don't you date or I, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, you know, or you're still dating so-and-so or you know, whatever mm -hmm. that is for you that you kind of, if you're prepared and you've already envisioned it playing out and how you're going to handle it um, or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. If, are y'all familiar with EFT? Do you use a EFT, the tapping? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know how to do that. I always love to say this is the perfect time to go take a bathroom break when that happens. You know, and go, go sit in the bathroom and tap for five minutes. <laughs> that like venting tapping. You can then come back and join everybody else and feel better. But just being prepared for that and knowing that being alone, being around people, whatever the circumstances are, though, those holidays can trigger, they can trigger wounds for us. Yeah. Um, and, and when we know that ahead of time, we're a little bit more prepared and we can handle them and, and not let them control us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I make. Oh. No, you go ahead, Tara. You go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> We do this with each other so often. I'm like, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go, you go. Oh my gosh. Um, so what would like what's I'm sure you've come across many blended families. Um, you know, as Renee's even talking with her own nap managing family dynamics. Um, what what's the biggest thing that you find that comes up? Um, I like I mean you've touched on boundaries, um, talking to everybody in the family, you know. Tapping's fabulous, but is there something, I guess what I'm bringing down back to is the kids. Um, and you talked about those emotions and things like that. Is there, um, I guess as parents, you know, you're always trying to decide what's the best thing for the kids and what's the best experience. How do you handle um, with your partner or people that have those partners and they're butting heads and they're not being so um, cooperative? That was <laughs> actually great. I was going to bring up, so it's perfect. I wanted that was another point I wanted to talk about. And that is, don't forget your partner. <laughs> so don't forget your partner during the holidays. We can get so busy that if we have a partner, they can really get neglected or left to the wayside. And you know, remember that that partnership really does still need to be at the center of everything, and not forgetting our partner and remembering to sit down. And so, especially if you've got blended families and you've got all this stuff going on. You know, you and your partner should be the core. You're like the center of the wheel. And the two of you sit down and really decide because that's what's going to be best for the children. If you're together on it and you make a decision about what's going to happen and you stay strong with that, it's better for your relationship, it's better for you, and it's better for your children. And and then the rest, everybody else has got to deal with it, right? Because you're that, you know, and even if it's you and your children, you decide what's best for your children. But so many times I see couples really, really butting heads. And instead of the holiday being this time that they can share together, it ends up being a time where they're drawn further apart and they're arguing. And so really remembering to put that person first and make time for them, make time for each other. And um, it was, I had a, a guy that was a friend of mine and he was a psychologist, wasn't practicing at the time, but and his family was really important. And he said that he realized his wife did a lot of extra things around the holidays. And so he would always try to see what he could take off of her plate. And so if they were going out someplace, he would say, I've got the babysitter. I'm going to make sure that the kids are fed. I'm going to, you just go get ready. Or he would try to do some extra chores around the house or something so that he could take a little off her plate. I always thought that was really wonderful, you know, from his perspective and from a woman's perspective, really making sure that you don't get so cranky and so stressed and so busy that you're like snapping at your partner and that you're, you know, like maybe you need to say no to an event or something and say, you know what? No, I'm just going to spend this time with my partner or, or with us as a family, right? Mm -hmm. So keeping that center unit strong is important and then it will all go out from there. Well, and I know even like on that note, in my experience, when I was married, it my husband um, was the full-time worker. I stayed home with the kids and I homeschooled. And 
And one thing that came up for us a lot was he was working overtime and extra weekends to, you know, bring in all this extra money to buy all these fancy gifts. And he felt undervalued and, you know, unappreciated. And I felt undervalued and unappreciated because his mind wasn't in what nice thing can I buy you to say thank you? It was in you're spending all my money on Christmas gifts and I'm out working and you're not you're not showing me that, but you're both so drained, you know? And yes, and that's why we're divorced. <laughs> to really think about ahead of time, right? And mm -hmm. so talk about if, if you're already in the midst of it, it might be kind of like, if you're in the midst of it, you say, look, we already realized we got ourselves in this mess and we're, we're in the middle of it. So yep. what can we do to get through the rest of this holiday still feeling great? Maybe we plan something for when the holiday's over. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be posting a blog. I think I wrote it a couple of years ago and I posted every year about how to reconnect with your partner after the busy holiday season because I think that's important. Um, yes. but, but even sitting down and saying, look, we know it's a mess this year and it's too late maybe to do something. But after the holidays, we're going to come up with a plan for next year so that maybe you make a plan ahead of time about we're only going to spend this much because I don't want you working extra and it's not about the money. So mm -hmm. we'll plan and you don't feel like you need to make more, you know, yeah. or a budget to start setting money aside every month so at the end of the year we've already got the money yeah and whatever we come up with that's all we spend you know and then really talking about what what's important to you for the holiday so that's you know we can touch base about that remember that everybody has different love languages which mm -hmm. means that when the holidays come they want different things and so if your partner is not in a, not about gifts and you're going out trying to figure out this perfect gift for them and really all they would want is for you to take a couple of evenings off and spend time with them or plan a trip after the first of the year or something. You know, like really communicating and saying what's important to you over this holiday season from me, what's important to you. And then the other person gets to share that too. Like what would make you feel important? What would make you feel loved? What's, you know, like, what do you need? And as a family, what do we need to do so that we don't get into this routine and this rut about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times too, Lori, people experience a lot of guilt. Uh, mm -hmm. Like there's that dynamic of, and not just maybe in a relationship with a partner, it could be with maybe aunts or uncles or grandparents or brothers or siblings when it comes to the holidays. And, you know, when you do set the, or you want to set those boundaries, but then you've got that guilt placed on you. And I think women especially struggle with that saying no, that like, oh, I just, let's just go because then they're going to be happy. And everything stays good, but then, you know, at the end of it, <laughs> how, what do you tell to your clients? About <laughs> as, especially, you're right, especially as women, nobody ever tells us that it's okay to put ourselves first. And, and it is okay to put yourself first. And it really is okay to put your marriage and your children and you, you know, you, your marriage and your children in that order, you know, because really, if you're putting you and your marriage first, your children are going to be first as well, um, you know, it, but it's okay to do that. And it, and it, there is that communication and really sort of saying, you know, which event stresses us out the most, which one are we going to drop this year? You know, which one's most important that we want to make sure we make time for and just realizing that we can't, this was the hardest lesson for me, I think in life was to realize I can't make everybody happy. And then I can make myself miserable trying to make everybody happy. And they're still darn it not all happy. <laughs> when I finally got that, you know, like I would help other people do that, but I, I would still like really frantically, I'm a people pleaser. And when I finally got it, it got easier to mm -hmm. say, they're not going to be happy. Everybody's not going to be happy anyway. So I might as well be a little bit happier. <laughs> and, 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 and if I feel guilty about that, well, it's okay. I can say to myself, it's just that conditioning. And the more you the more you practice it, the less guilty you feel. So feel guilty and do it anyway. <laughs> you know, it's like fake it, you make it kind of thing. But you really do have to do that. You have to say, I'm going to make this decision anyway, even if I feel a little guilty. Yeah, I agree. And I think, so, go ahead, Tara. <laughs> Are you <laughs> sure? <laughs> She's like, uh. <laughs> Don't you just love us? <laughs> oh, 
Oh my gosh. Well, I, I actually, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about this um, psych K, this, what, what is this all about? Can you tell mm -hmm. me a little more about it or tell us a little bit more about it? Psych K in some ways is similar to EFT, except that you can't do it by yourself. So you do have to do it with a trained practitioner. But it is an amazing way to get to unconscious beliefs and release them. Um, and there's been scientific studies showing where they do mind mapping and actually showing the changes in the brain through the psyche. Um, but it, it has to do with the left and right hemispheres. It's actually kind of comp that part of it's complicated um, and you don't need to know that part. But basically, it's just a really easy. It feels good. It's nice to do it. It's some energy work in there, some brain work, and it helps you to release unconscious beliefs. And you don't have to know what the beliefs are. So through the process of doing it, we come up with what those beliefs are, and we're we're putting positive beliefs into your unconscious that would be beneficial for you. Is the simple explanation of it, and it's fabulous. It's it's my go-to therapy for me, and I use it a lot of times with clients that are sort of in that stuck mode. Um, mm -hmm. I can, and then we'll use that, and we'll do some tapping along with it afterwards with some affirmation. So it's a cool process. If you ever want to try yeah. it, you call. We'll we'll do some. One of my uh, closest friends, Casey, who Tara's, I think, I don't know if Tara's met her or not. She does Psych K here in Edmonton and it's, I had never heard of it. And she, she had done a few sessions with me when she was taking her training and it's actually, it's really neat. It's neat. I've been doing it for, I, I don't know, like 20 years maybe. Like way mm -hmm. before, I think that it, way before they did all the mind mapping and could prove that it worked. We just yeah worked because we tried it on ourselves. Um, I happened to meet somebody who knew about it and it was an alternative practitioner and we would meet in his office on Saturdays and get his patients to come and we would practice on them for free and do it. And the results with us and with them were so amazing that I then um, went on and did more training with it and added it to my practice. So, yeah. Well, and I know for Casey, she uses it with, or she did use it with a lot of athletes and retraining different traumas through, you know, their athleticism or different belief patterns that they had that were holding them back from reaching their potential and yeah it's I think it's amazing I think it's very cool and yeah the sky's the limits on different techniques <laughs> and there's lots of them that are fabulous you know I think we come up with ones I like psych and EFT those are the ones that you know um, that I'm used to that I like there are lots of them that work but yeah those are just my favorites mm -hmm. so this book that you have coming, coming out? It's been out for a couple of years. It's been out for a couple of should years. Have, <laughs> you should have let Sarah take that one. <laughs> it's fine. Tell us a little bit about it. It's called Unmasking Secrets to Unstoppable Relationships. And, and that's my tagline for my business. And when I was meeting with the, um, the publisher, um, it was kind of what I wanted to call the book and she thought it was great. So that's what we called it. It came actually after my marriage ended. I, you know, I was married 28 years. 25 of those were amazing. I had an awesome marriage. And when I was thinking about starting another relationship, I wanted to be married again. Um, I had two children that were young and I, I just loved being married and I wanted to create another relationship. So I started thinking about like what made that one good. You know, if you're going to redo something, you want to start thinking not, a, you know, like what was what was important to making that relationship so good. And um, so I was kind of taking notes for myself and thinking, well, I could use this with clients as well. And a friend of mine was over for coffee one day and she was um, a, an editor by trade. And she said, you know, you ought to write a book. I was like, you got to be kidding. I can't write a book. And she was like, look, just start writing some stuff. I'll start editing it. So I started writing blogs and posting them. Um, and then, you know, once I got enough blogs going that I kind of felt confident, I, I put it together, took it to a publisher and created a book. And it's designed for women primarily. It's sort of, it's as if we were sitting, and I'm from the South, so I figured this big veranda and we're sitting on the veranda having our cup of tea or coffee. And, and we're just sort of chatting about just simple little tips about relationships and the differences between men and women and what makes those relationships work. And so that's what I wanted it to be. As women, nobody sits down and tells us little little, tidbits, little things that would help us. And so um, I took my own experience with clients, with myself, did some research on top of that, and created this little easy to follow book with exercises. It's not a complicated book, but it's supposed to be just to help women understand how to be better in relationships. 
people. And it, it actually won, um, it was submitted for, um, it was one of the top 100, it was picked out of thousands of books to be one of the top 100 independently published books that year. So apparently it wasn't just me that thought it was okay. I know, I was like, I guess I did <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Lori is the bomb. <laughs> so I'm this close to being finished with one for men. And it's, it literally, it's bullet points. It's like, here's areas, here's things you can do. And it's like over 365 different ideas in different categories of things men can do that would, in, that would make the women in their life, women in their life happier so that, so that the relationship's happier. That's the whole goal. It's not that it should be one-sided. But we don't understand each other sometimes and we don't know what to do so that we're I always tell people I want you to do less and get more results mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what these books are about so the second one is going to the publisher um any day now wow that's fun. exciting super exciting yeah. um so you kind of brought that up now uh through your book the the masculine and the feminine that was something i wanted to ask you about um from an energy perspective, but then also just like in our physical body perspectives, we are, we're very different. We have very different types of energies. And I think that's one of the struggles that come up. I think as women, we sometimes go, you don't understand me. And you know, we have to have a little bit of an emotional release at times. Yeah. And men are like, what's going on with you? Why are you, you know, like, so um, um, is that, <laughs> oh. I'm like doing this like little skit here. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we just need to vent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So is that something quite common? I'm assuming, but I, that's something that quite common that comes up. Like, what? How do you help your clients navigate um, that energy so that people, so that we can start to understand each other a little bit better and understand that maybe our energies are different, and that's why we respond differently. Yes. And so what I always try to tell people is that understanding is the first thing. If we don't understand each other, once we understand those differences and we know what's important to the opposite sex. Yeah then we know what to do that's going to get us better results. And when we understand each other, we go, oh, I know what that's about, right? As women, we can say, oh, I know why he's pulling into his shell and he's pulling away. And, you know, and I get that. And now I know what to do. What we normally would do would be the opposite of what we should do. And so I do think that understanding is, is a huge deal. And when I work with couples, we always talk about the difference between men and women. And when I work with singles, you know, I talk about that as well, because I think that if you're going to go into a relationship and you don't understand that, it's an up, it's more of an uphill battle. It's a struggle. Um, and so understanding that, funny, I had somebody tell me one time, well, for some women, they're just born and they know how to tap into that feminine energy and be in that energy in relationships. And the rest of us can't learn it. And it's like, oh, no, that's not true at all. Of course you can learn it. Does it come easier for some people? I think maybe it does. But that doesn't, just like anything else, you can learn how to do it. And when we understand, and we understand the reason, and that we're both going to benefit, I always say, for, to me, relationships are like a dance. And men and women have, are doing different steps to that dance. And if we don't understand the steps, we're stepping all over each other's toes, and it just really isn't very pretty. When we mm -hmm. get steps, all of a sudden, now it becomes this beautiful dance. And that's what I want to help people understand. And, and we need to understand that. But nobody teaches us. Like growing up, nobody says, oh, by the way, men and women are different. And let me let me explain that to you and tell you how to navigate that in a relationship. <laughs> right? Like it doesn't happen. That's one of the things that I'm passionate about doing. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so I have one other question about the holidays that I know a lot of people deal with and mental health has been a huge issue and around the holidays suicide rates are at their highest. Mm -hmm. I mean we all know there are family traumas, triggers, all this kind of stuff but how do people like what tips would you give people who who do deal with mental health issues and that overwhelm over the holidays, how do you deal with that? How, what advice do you give? I would say that they really need to sit down with somebody probably and get some help because when you're in the middle of it, you can't sort through it, you can't see it. But really mm -hmm. sorting through and figuring out a plan for what supports you. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not any different than what we talked about except that they need, they need more of a plan and they need mm -hmm. some extra help around that. Do you need to be alone and are you better alone? You know, do you need to make sure that you have plans 
so that you're not? Do you need to find a support group? Do you need, you know, and, and really watching the self-talk and maybe getting some help with that. Watch what you're saying to yourself. If you get up that morning and you start on this whole thing about how terrible it is, I'm by myself, I've, you know, this is wrong, that's wrong. I mean, whatever it is, not to say that those things aren't true and valid, but if, if you start going down that road, you're just going to make yourself feel worse and worse. You know, it's like we all, a lot of times people think it starts with feelings, but it doesn't. It starts with your thoughts and where your thoughts go, your feelings follow. If you mm-hmm. start to change your thoughts a little bit, your feelings will change. And then there's the whole, you know, we won't go, we won't dwell into this, but really being cautious about when we start to add substances. Yeah. That makes, that makes things so much worse. So many people do you know that are not feeling good about it? And the first thing they'll do is go grab that bottle of wine or they'll, and, you know, and of course that's a depressant and that's going to make them feel even worse. And now they're really not thinking clearly and they can really go down that rabbit hole. So really coming up with a real good support system and like a safety net. Mm-hmm. For that. Self. And depending on where what your state is depends on how much of a safety net you need. Well, and I think what you said about the self-talk is so important. I know for myself this morning, I just I've owned the Untethered Soul, the book, for like a year, and it irritated me the first time I read it. So I put it away <laughs> and figured I'll try it again at another time. And you know, this is practices I know and I know for myself coming through what I have in the last three and a half years of my divorce and the situations around that, a gratitude practice was the most powerful, powerful thing um, that kind of helped keep me level, you know, and not reacting and not triggered. And I think with the holidays, you know, not having expectations or releasing expectations, And like you're saying, the self-talk and and having gratitude for yourself and kindness to yourself going into those family dynamics, I think, Mm -hmm. can be so important. The only thing you can be grateful for is that I woke up that morning and I'm breathing, right? I have a roof over my head. Um, You know, if that's it, that's something to be grateful for. So I agree with you when I was going through my difficult time as well, that gratitude practice was a lifesaver. Yeah. Um, But... But when people are really down, if we're talking about really, you know, people that, that really seriously aren't doing well, they can't yeah. just do it by themselves. We can do that. They need that safety net and they've got to go reach out and get that help and 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 really make a plan for the mm-hmm. holiday. So if anybody's listening and feels like they're truly, truly struggling to that extent, reach out to somebody and come up with a plan, whether it's a friend that understands, a family member, you know. Um, a mental health professional, but definitely get some help around that. Well, and I think for the families remembering that are dealing with these family members that have mental health, I think just being empathetic and compassionate and not allowing yourself to be triggered by their triggers, you know, I think. I think demanding. So allowing them to create the day that's right for them. For some people being around all of that is going to cause them more stress. And they really, and we might think, oh no, you need to be with us. You need to be loved. Well, maybe really what they need is to really is to sleep all day. (laughs) Day passes or, or to, you know, sit in bed with their pajamas and and watch, you know, movies or something. Maybe that being around everybody might make it worse. So Mm -hmm. not to put your expectations for what would make it better for you. Kind of like the whole gift giving, you know, there's those love languages. Everybody's different. Everybody gets through things in a different way too. Some people need lots of liveliness and some people need quiet and some people need you to say, you know, do you want to go to the movies with me or do you want me to bring you leftovers at the end of the day? Or I mean, so really getting their input on what would be best for them as opposed to just assuming. Mm-hmm. I like that. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Lori knows what she's talking about. (laughs) Uh, Lori, can you tell everybody a little bit more about uh, where we can find you, um, what you offer to people, and um, yeah, where where they can find you if they're wanting to. So if you you. type my name in Google, it's Lori, L-O-R-I, Ann Davis. That's my website. It's LoriAnnDavis.com. You can find my Facebook that way. Um, you know, it's it's not hard to find me if you just type my name in there. Um, 
And so I do, I do relationship coaching. So I work with singles who are trying to, and that's probably about 75% of my, my clientele at this point in my career. And in a difference, it's really funny. The last five clients I've taken on were couples now. So it, the dynamics can change. But for the most part, it's usually, it's usually singles that are starting over um, or that have never been married. Usually it's one of the one extreme or the other. Either they've gotten out of a long-term marriage or they've never been married. And they're trying to figure out how to do it right this time, like how to pick the right one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so, so that or I work with couples that are just not as happy as they would like to be and, and are looking, looking to have more love and passion in their relationship to reconnect maybe at a deeper level. Um, and so I do that individually with clients all over the world. If you can get on Zoom, um, we can do a session. And I also have an online course for women that are single that I offer. And periodically, I offer group coaching. So you never know what I'm up to, but I'm doing different things. I've got a Facebook page. So um, you can always just find me, send me a message. I'll, um, I'll be happy to connect you in whatever way seems best for you. That's awesome. I I think it's a great year or a great time of the year too to have this stuff, you know, on the show because I think Christmas is kind of a make it or break it for some couples and some families. And, you know, if we can get through the holidays and we're okay, we'll be good. And if we can't, <laughs> New Year's, we're out. <laughs> the week, the couple of days, so that was this week, but the couple of days, like the day, a couple of days before Thanksgiving and then the few days after. I have gotten, I've taken five new, like my practice is full, at, at least for a short period of time. I've taken on five, assuming that they all show up and they all follow through, right? Five new couples where I guess was a really stressful time. And it was sort of, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess. I don't know. I'll find out when they all show up. But I've had people call and schedule and I, I have five new people that are showing up. And I thought, hmm, you would think everybody would be really busy and they wouldn't be reaching out. But who was reaching out, at least to me recently, was all the couples. Yeah. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm like really happy to be able to get in there and start helping them with this because they're motivated enough at the holidays to call me and schedule. Well, and I think it's so important, even if you're in a good relationship, it's not a bad thing to see a therapist or a counselor just because, I mean, good can be even better. Yes. And that was why I have really moved from therapy to coaching is because coaching is so proactive. It's mm -hmm. all about, I'm here, but I wanna be here, or I wanna be here, and how do I get there as quickly as possible, right? And, yeah. and so I love it. I absolutely spent 25 years doing counseling, and I've been doing coaching now for about five or so. And, and I just love being, I love being a relationship coach. I love being more proactive with people. So we were not, and you know, I think, honestly, I think I did a lot of that when I was doing therapy anyway. So it was a pretty easy transition for me, but, but I just, I love holding space for people, knowing where they can be and holding that space for them. Maybe mm -hmm. sometimes when they can't see it and then really being there and guiding them through that process to get where they want to be. So y'all get that. I know that you do. Yeah. <laughs> growth, is, well, and growth is amazing. It is. And Difficult. it's fun and you need somebody okay. there who got you and who can say you're going to get through this when you think you can't yeah that's yeah. awesome well they're being very that's i think that is actually really super awesome because like renee said it oh. can be that like time of the year so mm -hmm. if it's like you really want to work on it and try and make it work then work together to get through that so i think that's like super fabulous well, and what a great Christmas gift for those spouses that you, you know, maybe there are some things you want to work through then to give coaching and, and counseling. Because I know we females, for the most part, love doing the work <laughs> and we love seeing our partner do the work with us. It just kind of takes that relationship to another level. So, you know, what a neat Christmas gift idea to yeah. give the gift of this. And, you know, a lot of times people think of, oh, you know, men, especially we're going to go into counseling and it's going to be painful and it's not going to be fun. And it's and, you know, so when I when I'm talking with couples, I always say coaching really is going to be different. We are not going to sit there and you're not going to go through all these painful things. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about where you are, where you want to be. And we're going to talk about what proactive steps you can start taking to get in that direction. Like, I don't need to know 
you don't need to know all the details. We're not going to drag up all the past. We're really not. You're going to give me enough information to know where you are currently and where you want to be. And then we're going to start getting there. And, and men like that. So the yeah. men, once they come, they're like, oh, this is different. And I like that. And so I think that, that that's also something about coaching that really is, is, is different and it's beneficial. And the other part to that, and then I'm going to hush because I've got a client coming in a few minutes, is, is that one partner can come by themselves and actually change the relationship. And, you know, you don't that and that was a new concept to me when I first I don't know how many years ago started coming to grips with that. that one person can change the dynamics of a relationship if they start to make some positive changes. And then sometimes the other person will come along and be willing to work once they start to see some changes. But, you know, it's 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 when it's like this. And when one person changes the dynamics, it changes the dynamics. And so you can say, quit saying my partner won't come and I won't do, can't do anything. You know, go see somebody, go get some help, start making some changes and see what happens. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Well, thank you so much, Lori. It has been fabulous having you here today with all this wonderful advice for families and navigating relationships around the holidays, because it's more than just you know, so your partner that can expand out children, family members and things like that. So I think you've given us some great things to think about. Thank you. <laughs> it's been bad. Oh. oh, go ahead. No, I thought I had muted you. So I was making sure I was like, oh, no, she's talking and I've muted you. <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much, Lori. I really appreciate it. Um, if, if there's anything else you want to leave us with it, advice for families uh, for navigating the holidays or just call Lori so she can navigate it. For you. <laughs> of course, we'll also put the links below. Um, to, to Yeah, we'll put the links below for Lori, her book and everything like that. Brenda says that was a really great show. Thanks. Glad you enjoyed it. Just remember to take care of yourself because if you don't care to take care of yourself, then you can't be there for anybody else. So that's our that's that's my final thought. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. Thank and you. Next time, next time we'll have to have you do some of the site K. That might be a fun adventure. <laughs> that, that'd be awesome. Thank you everybody so much for watching today. Please like us, heart us, share us, tell your friends, uh, share this out because Lori has some great advice for people there um, navigating the holiday season. We will drop her links below and we'll have to have you back sometime in the new year, Larry, Lori. Talk about passion. And, know, Ooh. That's my favorite. Maybe a couple stuff in February. Yeah. How to fire it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome okay bye everybody thank you so much for watching canada see you tomorrow at 2 30 alberta time and you can now find us on youtube as well boom see you later canada <laughs>